Hi there. So I wanted to show you something interesting uh, that I ordered not too long ago. What we have here is a ZVS driver or a zero voltage switching driver. Uh, interesting little thing. Not a heck of a lot to it. We've got some big high frequency, high voltage capacitors. Or at the very least high frequency. I believe these are high voltage too. Yes. Uh, we have some big inductors. We have a couple of power MOSFETs under there. A couple of, uh, you know, diodes and so forth. A couple of resistors. Not a lot to this little thing. It's ran me about eight bucks from China and about a month and a half to uh, waiting to get it. Uh, and you see we've got a, a pretty gnarly looking coil on the end of here. <laughs> so what this is, is a driver that we can use uh, for inductive heating. It can be used for a couple other things. You can use it to drive uh, high voltage fly box backs out of old TVs to make yourself a high voltage power supply and so forth. Um, but that's not what I'm interested in using this for. I want it for heat and maybe one or two other ideas. But right now we're, we're dealing with the inductive heating. So I'd known about these for a while and I'd seen them every once in a while when shopping around. Uh, but I finally decided to buy one after watching, uh, after watching a certain YouTuber blow one up. <laughs> Arduinos vs. Evil, AVE. Uh, he had bought a much larger version of one of these. Uh, and he was messing around with it in his shop. And within minutes, he had blown the thing up. Uh, I'll put a card up top uh, linking to that video. Uh, it's a good bit of fun, and he's a you know fun guy to watch anyways. Uh, his cost him a bit more. Again, this is the smaller, cheaper version. But I knew that these suckers uh, can be a little bit risky if you don't have some way of limiting the current to them. You're driving effectively a dead short here. And if anything goes wrong, you've got MOSFETs dumping power into a dead short and the blue smoke will oh so vigorously be released. <laughs> Which is why we've got this over here. It, this probably isn't the best solution, but it's, you know... Oh, and we've got wires hanging out. And, you know, there, there must be better ways to do this. But I had a, a reel of a hundred of these sitting next to me when I was thinking, you know, how am I going to limit the current to this thing so it doesn't blow itself up? So, this is what we ended up with. These are polyfuses, or negative temperature coefficient uh, polyresistors. They're used as self-resetting fuses in a lot of circuits, and they're really handy to have. Uh, but they seem like a quick and easy way to do this. Because normally, you know, I've got my big lead-acid battery here, big 12 amp hour battery. I normally leave this little 3 amp breaker on it, so I can mess around with stuff. And it'll pop before I, you know, do anything stupid. I can short out the terminals and I'm not going to destroy the battery or, you know, arc weld things together and melt wires. But that wasn't going to cut it. This thing's pulling more than 3 amps. Each of these polyfuses cuts out at about 3 amps. Or rather, uh, they'll do a hard cutoff at about 4.5 amps. Uh, but they'll do a continuous 3 amps before they start to cut off. And with the way we're doing this here, they'll do kind of a soft cutoff at first. And then they'll completely, or just about completely shut everything down. Let me reconnect this while we got it here. So the other bit we've got here, I've got a... One of these little inexpensive voltage and current meters here uh, hooked up so we can see what we're doing. And our switch consists of the terminals that usually go to that breaker. So that's a little bit uh, rigged together. But yeah, let's hook this up and take a look at what we've got here. So we're going to need a test subject for this. And this is my test subject, just a crummy key out of a dollar store lock that I don't care about. I mean, it was convenient. So I've been playing with that. And I've got my infrared thermometer here also so we can take a look. Gonna be working in Fahrenheit today. And contact. And you can see we're already drawing almost three amps here. And that's just driving the coil. There's a lot of current going through this thing, so it's gonna get hot. Yeah, it'll easily get up to uh, 200, 220 degrees in not a lot of time. With commercial setups like this, they use copper tubing and they run uh, water or other coolant through it to keep the work coil cool because otherwise the coil will melt itself out. That's why you can see there's so much uh, scale and discoloration on that coil. It's because it's just something cheap I threw together. It's just stripped Romex. So here goes our test subject, and you can see that current climbing. See, we're going 11 amps there. Oh, and I'm shorting out against the coil. We're down to 7, 6, yeah. And she starts to get hot. Now if I pull too hard, if I insert the key too quickly, those little polyfuses will uh, will kick out before we can get much here. But I wonder if you can start seeing the uh, glow there. This key 
It's glowing a nice cherry red. Get it all the way in there. Out she comes. Get some tap water here. So yeah, there's one hot sucker. Let's go in again. <laughs> nice bit of flash boiling there. Yeah, let's see if I pop the polyfuses this time. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Now we've pulled too much current for too long and they went ahead and reset. It's not a complete cutoff. But these suckers are going to be, yeah, fairly warm. Make the temperature on those. 180 degrees, give or take. Yeah, they're warm. And they're not going to reset until we kill power. Let them cool down a bit. Douse that key again. So yeah, this is a really interesting bit of technology. Especially considering you can get something like this so cheaply now. You know, inductive heating used to be a big commercial thing. Now you're actually seeing them in some consumer stoves. The You know, the higher end stoves that have inductive uh, cook surfaces. Nifty idea as long as you have the right kind of pans. Um, but what's happening here is that we're flipping these coils back and forth, you know, as far as the power goes, with those two MOSFETs. It's switching when the voltage hits zero, that's why you call it a zero voltage switching driver. And it's driving this coil with a lot of current at a decently high frequency. And we'll pull it up on the uh, frequency counter in a minute to show you. Actually, let me cool this off too while we got it. <laughs> a lot of parts on this thing get hot. And this whole board is warm, every part on it is warm. Uh, again, cheap Chinese, probably not specced out quite right. <laughs> so yeah, we've got high frequency, high current, going through a coil. So we're setting up an alternating magnetic field. And when we stick something uh, metal in there or something conductive, you know, a magnetic field in the around the item, we'll create a magnetic field in the item. And when you have a magnetic field in a conductive, uh, you know, an alternating magnetic field in a conductive item, it establishes an alternating current. And that current generates an opposing magnetic field. So we have the magnetic field of the coil and the weaker, but still there, magnetic field of the, uh, the workpiece there, and they're fighting each other. And when they cancel each other out, what they leave for us is heat. <laughs> so we can use that to heat things up. And it's interesting because it, it can be done without actually contacting the uh, the workpiece. So you can do really interesting stuff like uh, heat the inside of a vacuum tube that's already been sealed and closed. I've seen that done to uh, to coat them with the getter material. They'll boil off the getter material from inside the tube. Uh, it can be done to heat up workpieces that you know there just really isn't any other good way to do it, and it allows certain manufacturing processes that just wouldn't be practical otherwise, or wouldn't even be possible. So yeah, now I can heat small things. <laughs> Might be useful for uh, hardening small items. Uh, I don't think I would ever really try to harden uh, screwdriver tips or anything like that. I have a, you know, hardened key, probably a bit more brittle, but not a huge amount. Again, we only got to a uh, cherry there, cherry red. We didn't get up to you know, white hot or anything like that. But still, we've changed the, uh, the structure of the steel in this thing. So let me kick that on one more time here. And this time I'm gonna hook up the frequency counter. I'm gonna see what we've got going on there. And of course, my frequency counter is about as old as I am. <laughs> uh, there we go. I give us, uh, some metal here because the wires on this coil get hot. And I don't really feel like melting my uh, my leads there right now. Let's hook up. Yeah, that is cooled down at this point. So we're hooked up there. Let me bring you over to the frequency counter. Of course, it's 
behind everything else because I've got the soldering station on top of it. Yeah, yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> so let's go for this. Nice old-fashioned frequency counter. And currently we're showing nothing. All right, let me power it up. So there we go. About 250 kilohertz. It's a decent frequency that this thing runs at. So it could be uh, noisy if you're working with any radio equipment nearby, but yeah, I don't have anything operating on the band, and I don't have the uh, scanner or the ham radio on right now, so I'm fine with that. <laughs> All right, let's shut that down. Take my leads back off. And yeah, they started warming up already. So yeah, I may have one or two other uh, more nefarious ideas on what to use this little guy for. <laughs> but we're going to have to wait on that till another day. Uh, maybe we'll have a bit of fun with this down the road. And I'll see if we can uh, throw a video up about that. But yeah. This has been our little inductive uh, heating out unit. Oh, hold on, let me actually kick her back on. See what we can do here. Yeah. There we go. See, there are some other interesting things you can do with this. And some of it involves using different type uh, work coils. And this is crude. <laughs> it didn't really work out. Uh, but I was messing around with a, uh, a pancake coil here, which you can use to heat up the surface of a metallic object, or a conductive object, rather. And you can vary where the heat goes by the shape of the coil and by where the workpiece is. If you know the workpiece is in the center, it's going to get heated in the surface. If it's towards the side, uh, the heating will be distributed differently. So on a, a larger piece or a thicker piece, you have a bit of control over what you're doing. Now I've got a, uh, a friend there that uh, was thinking of using one of these to bend small tubing. You know, preheat the tubing before bending it. And yeah, that'd be a great idea. You know, a small item like this. You know, you'd have to be careful with your duty cycle, uh, because everything on this thing gets hot. There is no active cooling or anything else like that. <laughs> when there really should be cooling for the coil, and this entire board should have some kind of cooling, you know, it, it gets uncomfortably warm. Not too warm that I can't touch it, but these are large, thick capacitors, and the fact that they're getting warm... You know, that's, that's not dangerously warm, that's not out of spec for them, but it is still concerning, because if you had this thing on for too long, they would probably hit the point of no return and just cook themselves. So, very limited duty cycle on a little sucker like this. But it's still fun, and it, I think it was worth the, uh, the eight bucks to play around with. So yeah, hopefully we'll have something else fun to do with this down the road, uh, otherwise I will catch you later.